So Westgate part Towers Part 2, lifting out the areas of blue from the sky that went over buildings and trees and other areas where you don't want the blue, using a flat nylon brush and a little water, a little clean water, and then dab off with a tissue should take away the blue and particularly on areas where the buildings and other shapes like trees are lit that's important that we try and get back to white paper try and lift out back to light it's there so that's actually in shadow so that might not matter so much over here this tree is in blossom so that probably would need a bit of a little bit of lifting out. Not quite sure how to paint that yet. There's some lifting out on the roof here. A little bit just there. And some over here. Chimneys. The blue is very good at coming away from the paper, uh, the cerulean blue and ultramarine mix that I used. This, although this is in shadow, I just want to take that away. Um, it might, this overlap might come through, might make a difference. Let's try it here. Take that away a bit. So the, the first areas in a watercolour, I think, to paint are the lightest parts of the image, or would be the lightest parts of the image. And that would mean giving, this, giving these clouds a bit of form and a bit of light. So I'm going to mix a little bit of diluted yellow ochre, just, just yellow ochre on its own, clean water, different brush, that's pale yellow ochre, and um, I just want to test that somewhere, yep, that's diluted yellow ochre, it's got something else in it, so the brush may have been dirty, let's clean that off, a little bit of pale ochre, and some grey, <coughs> pinkish grey, let's try that, so ultramarine would be the base for grey, Fairly dry mix this, and a little bit of crimson, making a mauveish colour, and then a very small amount of ochre, which will turn that mauvey colour into a grey. Which is yeah, that colour there, that sort of purpley grey. Put that down for a minute. Take that out of the way. So the pale ochre, I'd like to try and um, put a little tint into the cloud, but leave the top edge of the cloud uh, white. Light's coming that way onto this image, so the shadow is going to be over on the lower left end of the cloud. This is a sort of rough edge, another dry brushed edge, a little hint of of warmth in the white of the cloud, as this is the nearest cloud. Before that has a chance to dry, I'm going to try this um, dry mix of the violet grey and <clears throat> paint into the lower edge of the cloud. <coughs> Excuse me, there shouldn't be light on here. Uh, the cloud is sort of vaguely like cotton wool, so that's that's what I'm aiming for, this sort of uh, soft, diffused transition from the shadow in cloud, which is, with this sort of cloud, not a very heavy shadow, into light, just along that edge, and then dissolve the edge in the cloud. Maybe take that up a little bit. And work that down so it shouldn't really be light on the bottom edge of the cloud 
that does depend on this brush being fairly dry so it's not, not getting too much um, water on that pale ochre again let's put a little bit of pale ochre over there there's the lightest of shadow in these clouds so there's a little bit of wet into wet and that's creating a soft uh, blurred edge of light and shade in the cloud keep up the ochre that's got to be clean so in theory the whitest whites uh, the purest and whitey clouds will be higher up those, those are the clouds that are nearer and the clouds that are more distant through layers of atmosphere in theory should be less white or have less contrast so that's what I'm trying to do with this one just to make it a little bit less to make the shadow a little bit less dark make the light a little bit less light and a little bit of ochre there a bit of ochre here and then so I'm leaving the top edge of these clouds out I'm not going to put anything on there just leave that white so that leaves this dry brush effect of the torn edge of cloud alone the bottom edge is putting a little bit of shadow into while on damp so one cloud or one area of sky at a, uh, at a time a little bit more ochre uh, maybe here all watercolour dries lighter than it looks when it's wet so that's what I'm banking on here that's so that's behind that tree and behind this tree a little bit is some cloud switch brushes let's dab into that and make that shadow underneath the cloud a little more evident although less contrasting than the higher cloud just paint into that I got the wrong brush I've only got two brushes so difficult to get the wrong one it should be lifted out a little bit of white there and a tiny bit of white or uh, ochre rather in the white up here. On a sunny day there is a sort of golden white colour to Clyde I think and that's that's what I'm aiming for. It may not be too apparent in a photograph but it I think for a painting it um, becomes significant. You make a, a difference in these tints of white in a sky. Put that little bit of shadow in there Clyde really is a bit made up. Um, so in, in a watercolour, uh, developing a watercolour from light to dark. So we can always make it darker, it's difficult to make it lighter later on. That's why I'm going to start with putting down some warm whites or tints of white. Um, onto the buildings on the left that are in sunlight and I'm going to give this a little bit of um, yellow ochre and a tiny bit of crimson a little bit of yellow ochre try to warm up these whites see if I can get that to go so they're white buildings which would disappear uh, otherwise unless I'll give them some value and end up being the same as the sky which is difficult um, because the sky is the source of light and everything else is receiving light so these buildings should be um, just slightly duller than the than the sky and photographs don't tell you that sort of information but that's what I think will work for the painting is to make this all these buildings um, register more and with more solidity uh, with this pale ochre so the sunlight the whole, the whole image is suffused in sunlight is bathed in sunlight that includes the 
the wall along the edge of the river. It includes the stonework on the parapet here and right down to the water's edge. This is pale ochre, uh, sometimes with a little uh, touch of crimson in it. The bridge, although the bridge is partly in shadow, that's um, and it's got algae on it. It's got a touch of green. I'm going to give it a base layer of this ochre um, colour. So the sky was painted quite quickly, painted fairly rapidly. The um, subsequent layers, I hope, will be done more gradually in a traditional method of um, wet on dry. So that means uh, building up layers and letting them dry and then building up another layer and letting that dry. So this uh, stonework on the towers is a, is a sort of different kind of light. It's a very, very um, bleached looking effect in sunlight. I'm going to leave some gaps there and do a little bit, a little bit of cadmium yellow pale down that side. And here too, pale cadmium yellow diluted with a little ochre to paint into the underpainting of this. There's spring colours uh, in the trees, so there's sort of lime green. This is in shadow, but it's it's to to co create continuity in the watercolour. I'm going to give that um, a, and also an underpainting of ochre and a little tiny bit of cadmium yellow. So there are branches of the trees coming across this stonework and I'll have to paint that later when this first layer has dried. So I'm trying to, to create a feeling of light throughout the image or warmth, it's another way of putting it, and the warmth comes from underpinning the colours with a either ochre or ochre and crimson or ochre and cadmium yellow those sort of mixtures as a as a sort of um, clue for for sunlight. So that's also a little bit warmer maybe through there, keeping it pale and through there. Didn't lift out the the edge of this river barge here. I'm going to take that away. I said about building up the um, illusion of water with glazes, and a glaze is simply one translucent layer of colour on top of another. So this is dilute ochre again, and the reflections in water by glazing rather than um, mixing, we get a sort of more subtle effect, like two layers of stained glass going on top of each other, not, not mixing the colours, that's important. The colours, obviously yellow and blue, would make green, but in this case they don't, because there isn't an opportunity for them to blend on the surface, and that means when you're glazing, to be quite positive with the, the colour layer uh, that you're putting on and to leave it alone. That's important not to brush too much in the same area because that could re-dissolve the colour. So I'm going to put a little bit of that ochre colour on here. This is a very limited palette at the moment, no green so far. So there are other layers to come, the um, trees, the greens, but meanwhile this needs to dry and um, we'll continue that in part three.